What is up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are exactly where we had left off in the previous episode. We were fighting with this group that they had made one really really good maneuver that had pretty much left us in the dark with regards to our own success. Kind of a scary thing if I'm honest. They hit us pretty hard and they hit us pretty fast and they hit us pretty relentlessly. Now what I think I should probably do is block him from moving in on Luden with Eric. So let's do that for now. And he has the ability to deal a little bit of extra damage, or he can sunder out this guy's armor. I don't think it's really going to matter what he chooses. So I think I'm just going to go for the flat attack. And so there it is. We got him back down to 5 strength. We have skipping turn occurred right there. We took a little bit of damage. He forced him to fight. On this end, I'm going to continue busting up his armor, unless he's... Yeah, he's not lower, unfortunately. I wish that he was, were that he was, my life would be so much easier. On this front, we have a lot of bad things happening. And I, it's almost to the extent that I think I should probably join this fight over here because we're looking like we may get surrounded in the next little bit. The number one thing that I need to maintain is I have to keep Gunolf right here. And I had to look at his name. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names in this game. I have to keep Gunolf in the fight. I don't have a choice right there with regards to that strategy. Gunolf needs to be maintained so that he can hit these guys really hard. If at any point Gunolf starts taking like... 13 damage like anybody else on this battlefield. It's going to be a big, big problem for us. We're going to continue using his taunt to force that attack over there. I want to keep this guy tied up as long as I can. I want him in straight bondage mode up until here and... Well, up until at least we limit the field of enemies. On this side, I'm going to continue using his willpower to sunder out some armor because that's going to be about the best that he can accomplish with the remainder of his HP. Almost got a kill right there, unfortunately. I was hoping for one, but unfortunately, you can't always get what you want. I could move him over to there. It's strange that it's not allowing me to use willpower on a lot of his attacks, and I'm not sure why. We'll take a swipe at this boss character and get him out of the way. An unfortunate circumstance over there in which we're probably going to lose a character. He's got 1 HP left. So let's bring Luden in and we'll finish that off. A 30%. Oh, his armor is too high. Well, I deeply regret that decision. Let's take the 30%. Oh, deflect. It was worth a shot. I mean, we tried. And that's going to leave him for Eric. Ew, a deflect with a 90%. I was hoping that's how it wouldn't go down, but it looks like that's the way the game's going to have it boil, unfortunately. I'm going to swing him back around to this side, and we'll get him ready for combat with this group. Okay, and so that puts him... In the same situation, so I want to keep his damage tied up. And so, down goes one of our guys. Unfortunate. I'm going to swing him back around this way. And with regards to what I plan to accomplish here... I guess I'll work his armor a tad. Good, they're focusing on the tank. I love it when a plan comes together. Let's have Eric finish this guy off because he could use a level up. And so he struck him about the shins. Very nice. That's the best that humans can do in this case. You just got to hit somebody in the shins until they fall over. With this individual, what I'd like to accomplish is a move off to that side. And unfortunately, he doesn't have much left to offer us. I'm interested in seeing what Rest does. At the same time... Well, I don't think he's going to be able to escape combat. So let's go through. And let's just sunder some armor. Why not? Our Warhawk claims yet another victim. I'm 
gonna give Luden a little bit of extra willpower so that he can impale this guy because I feel like it'll be entertaining. Because I feel like it. And so he's now pushed back. Yeah, I was gonna say best case scenario, he's just gonna step over there and wipe out Luden. But Luden was an asshole to me in the last episode, so that's what he gets. I don't really care if he gets wiped out. Kind of a douchebag. Let's attack this guy for a full five. And so he's now becoming much less marketable with regards to his combat efficiency. We've got a deflection right there. On this side, we can't really deal much more damage, so I'm just going to go for a straight hit on his armor. Looks like he's going to run for it. Continue working this armor right here. It appears as though they have left me... Well, I'd, actually, they haven't left me with a choice. I was going to say, it appears as though they left me with a choice. No, they haven't. I pretty much have to kill this guy on this turn. I really wish Gunolf wasn't so good at killing people. He's got to leave some XP for everybody else. It's getting a little embarrassing. I'm going to give him some extra morale. So that he can finish this guy off with one swing. And there it is. Very nice. We surveyed the battlefield. We lost way too many guys, so we're going to pull back. We only lost two fighters on that one in 18 Varl. That's not terrible. Considering that it was like a thousand forces versus a thousand forces, 18 casualties is an amazing setup, so I will 100% take it. We'll continue on our way. And we just had a day pass. I wonder if that counted. Let's go take a look. Oh, it did. It counted. That's cool. So if you get wounded right before the end of a day, it totally works for you. Bad assery. In this case, did he get a level up? No. Let's rotate through. Hakon's a war master. We have a war hawk. Eric's ready to go. And I think that's not a bad plan, simply because his ability might be nice for the future. It grants an ally four willpower. And I think he'd be a little bit more useful if we increased his capabilities a tad. He's a pretty useful character as he stands right now, but he could be even more usefuler. At the moment, I'm going to sit on my renown, though, because I don't know if we're going to have to buy supplies at the next town. So we'll have to take a look. Let's rest for a day. And then be on our way. I don't think we're going to get attacked again within 24 hours. At least I hope we don't. That would be completely and totally awful. If we do, we'll make some slight modifications. The nice thing about this game is that it does supply you with a wide variety of individuals who are all more or less do the same job. So if you've got wounded people, you can be like, alright, well I'll swap you to here, you to here. Deep inside the woods, you get the distinct sense that dredge have more or less surrounded you and in great numbers. Their dark shapes create unsettling patterns as they slide between the trees in every direction. At least it's not as bad as it could have been if you hadn't taken out a good portion of them already, you think to yourself. You call more gear around. Any ideas? Yeah, pray to whatever god you like. There's more of them waiting on the other side of the woods than we've seen so far. We may be seriously outnumbered, especially if we wait. Ursa appears unexpectedly. What if, she says, patting her arrows knowingly, you could set part of the woods on fire to draw their attention while you escape or try to draw them into a trap? Was this your idea, you ask? She shrugs innocently. You consider your options. Let's... Yeah, let's create a forest fire as a distraction. You escort Ursa about an hour's trek to the far edge of the trees where she sets up a few soaked rags in key locations. With a volley of flaming arrows, the rags catch in dramatic fashion, setting up or sending the area up in flames despite the thickening snow. You hightail it back to the caravan where Mogir is already reporting that Dredger are heading towards the fires. Ursa cackles with delight, all but reinforcing the nickname the Varl have given her as The Witch. After a long half hour, their numbers have thinned. We better get out of here before that really spreads, suggests Mogir. You break through the trees and plow into a dredge who remained behind, hoping to cut through them before the others noticed. So we've got 557 versus like several thousand of us. It's pretty much over for them. Let's go ahead and charge. And I don't know how we're doing right now with regards to our main force. We are definitely going to have to swap some people out. I think for this fight, we'll swap Gris. Well, they only have min minus one to their strength. That's not so terrible. I mean, we could roll out with what we have right now. I suppose, yeah, let's swap Gris. We'll give him a, we'll give Bercy for Gris. I'm sorry, Bercy for Hakon. I mean, Hakon's a really good character. I think his strength is 17, but we've still got Gunolf. So Bercy might be useful there. We've got him way outnumbered anyways. And then we'll swap in, yeah, let's swap in Gris for our friend Mogir, and that'll give him a chance to rest. 
I know I, I realized that I don't kind of swap my party around quite as much as some people might like. Oh, this fight's gonna be rudimentary. This isn't gonna be bad at all. It's just three versus whatever. We may even be able to chase him down after this. First move is gonna go to our initial tank. I think what I'll do with him is I will do exactly what I'm thinking about doing. We'll use two to get over to here. And it's going to knock the adjacent. They're going to do one armor damage for each tile. Eh, I'd rather just deal the damage. So he's now down to 3 HP, which means he is worthless. Little bit of damage taken right there, but on the plus side, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold him right here. So we're going to force his hand. So he has no choice but to attack us from here on out. On this side, there goes the 3. He's going to work that armor a little bit. With this gent down here, we could do a little bit of damage, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So now he's also been taken out of the fight. He's pretty much not going to be useful to anybody. He's going to expend a little bit of willpower to get himself back into battle, though, which is interesting enough. And to avoid our dear friend over here from having to take a 15 strength hit, I'm going to open up on him. And so there it is. He's down to 6 now. Which means he is in deflection mode. He's not even accomplishing anything anymore. We're going to allow Luden to have one of these kills. Down they go. And I'm pretty happy that our ruse worked out. Really happy that our ruse worked out. This could have been an ugly situation for us had it not. I'm going to go in and attack right there. And pillage mode for this guy. It looks like he's going to run away and try and summon some allies, but he did that on the wrong turn. He should have done that on the previous turn, because in pillage mode, it means that we all get to act now before he gets to do anything. Kind of a funny situation, but not a whole lot you can do about it. I'm going to send... Yeah, let's send him up there. And we'll have him sunder a bit of his armor. He's not very strong. I definitely need to work on giving him a little bit better strength or something. And next, of course, it's going to be Gunolf annihilating the enemy one more time. Kind of a glory hog, definitely. You take a brief moment to survey the battlefield. The enemy's pushed back all the way down the line. Let's kill a few more as they flee. We never do that. You attack any dredge still brave enough to face you. Looks like there's only one left, so this opportunity is completely and totally worked out in our favor. I'm going to get him started by doing the exact same thing. Seven damage straight out the front of the gate right there. I'm going to leave everybody else where there's at because there's really no point moving around. They're not going to be able to close that distance with him. Actually, Bercy can. Let's get Bercy up in here. And I did want to go through, and let me see, and I just knocked a whole bunch of stuff over on my desk. Luckily, none of it was spillable. Okay, so it doesn't refill any of your attributes in between fights. That was one of those things that I was wondering if your armor and health came back, but anybody that was down stayed down. No, it's pretty much an all-or-nothing gamble. Let's have Bercy complete the kill, maybe earning himself a promotion. We gain the Tortoise Band. Very nice. What we would want a band full of turtles for? I don't know. I hear they play slow tempo music. But every now and again, you get them hopped up on that turtle meth, and they'll play something quick. Now then, that went pretty well, and that gives us the time to have everybody else rest back up. I'm not going to take the time to camp because I feel like everybody should be back in good spirits. Although I do want to take a look at that turtle band. Let's have a look at what we captured. Because we did go to all the effort to fight the extra battles, so we may as well see what our booty was. Because if you know me, it's collecting that booty. That's one of the best parts of an adventure. Two armor on rest. I think we saw that at a shop back in the day, actually. I recall seeing that. It's a good thing we didn't buy it, because then it, I think it was with Rook's group, though, so maybe whatever. We got some extra Renown, too. Look at that boost in Renown. I think we were at 17 before, so we got a nice little grip of Renown. Let's go through and level up people that need to be leveled. Our Provoker, I would like to get his strength a little bit higher. Bercy's a Warhawk, and that means he's got, like, what? Tempest? Yeah. Gunolf. What is he going to do on his next promotion? Just have higher stats? I'm going to go for it, I think. Well... Honestly, Gunolf is already so combat effective that I don't want to waste it on him, though. That's, like, the other thing that I'm concerned with. Let's bring Eric up. Eric's a really good idea, so we'll have him spend 10 Renown right there, and that'll bring him up to level 3. And I swear to God, Eric, if you leave right now, I'm going to be so frustrated with you. In the last couple episodes, he had expressed his concerns that he wasn't really needed with us. I don't know. He's, he's being a grumpy emo kid right now, so whatever. We'll send him off to the corner. He's leveled up his ability, which means he gives us four willpower now when he taunts people. That's a pretty good exchange. One willpower for four. 
and I think I'm gonna raise I'm gonna do the same thing with him that I did with Luton I'm gonna raise his linkage and I'm gonna raise his strength by one because an eight an eight strength is pretty piss poor honestly for a frontline combatant he's a support character I know but I'd still like him to be able to emit a little bit of force if he needed to Gris didn't level up fast salt everybody else is good to go I'm gonna leave my renown where it's at right now in case we have to buy some more supplies pretty soon Mogear and hack on are back so let's go ahead and swap Mogear back in for Chris. And we'll put in... Let's see, we've got Mogear, Fasalt, Bercy. I feel like I'm missing somebody right here. Fasalt's a tank. Okay, so we've got two tanks, two DPS. Let's keep Bercy in for now. We'll have him continue to work on leveling up. I would like to see if I could get his strength up a tad higher so that he's about as good as Gunolf. Because we've seen so far how good Gunolf is. And if we can have two characters that are that good... It's pretty much just going to be a tempest of destruction for our enemies. It's going to be like a little tornado of doom. We will pet the woolly thingamaduber of travel. And off and away we go. I think that's where we're going right now. Not so sure though. My directional abilities are quite stunted in this game. I bet it's going to swap us back to Rook pretty soon anyways. Yeah, the screen stopped moving. We made it in one piece, though. That went much, much better than Rook's campaign. I had been feeling a little bit down about my strategic decisions, and I feel like it's a good thing that Mogear's group did better. I just noticed there's there's dredge right there. That's so cool. The attention to detail they've put in the backgrounds. Like I'm always constantly looking along the edges if you're looking at my cursor. I'm always looking in the backgrounds and along the edges and just being like, where are the enemies at so that we can make this work better? I'm sorry, not where are the enemies at, but like where are the little Easter eggs at so that I can identify like how well all this is working. It's a really, really cool thing how much love and detail they've put into this game. Just the sheer amount of elbow grease. I mean, I don't have greasy elbows, so I'm bad at putting elbow grease into things, but some people have really greasy elbows. So, you know, if you got greasy elbows, put them to use. This is a really, really long, dramatic walk. I feel like we're doing one of those 300 walks, like, -na 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 but then it just kind of never ends. Well, it appears as though this location has been a sacked like a bunch of potatoes. Although, I don't know if all oh, those people right there? I do see something in the background. Luckily, all the dreads seem to be inanimate, which is how I prefer them. What is this mess about? It looks like a full-scale battle happened, and recently. But only dredge bodies remain. Maybe we'll see something from the tower. Have Varl search the buildings and make sure there's no dredge waiting to spring on us. On it. And don't set up camp or make a fire. We'll take a look and then get out of here before anything else goes wrong. You mean more wrong. Okay, well, seeing as we have a bit of time left in this episode, let's head on up to the tower. I don't feel any need to really kind of micromanage. I want to make sure if there's another battle that we get to finish it off. Oh, they're having us take, since the storyline battle, I'm going to bring my A-team. I mean, I feel like I may regret doing something of that kind, but at the same time, I do want to bring some extra people. Grizz is nice because he can knock people back. He can do about five armor damage in one attack. And he can remove the enemy four squares back, which is always really nice. However, Fasalt can lock somebody down. Like, hands down, he eliminates somebody from the fight and just forces them to swing at him, which can be really, really useful. So I think I'm going to keep my team where it's at right now. I don't like Ursa at all, so if you're waiting for me to use Ursa, I'm probably not going to. She seems just like one of those characters that, for my personal play style, I just don't like her. Plus the fact that her AoEs hit all my own troops, and the thing that happens in this game is everybody's all intermittently spangled all over the place. Ah, what is that right there? A fire slinger. He throws bombs, okay. So essentially he's taken the majority of my jokes and he's armed himself with them. Let's have a look at where we can move people around to. I'm gonna fall way back on this one. Because it looks like we can pincer right there. I'm gonna have... A tank there, a tank here, a DPS there. Yeah, we're going to run the same formation on both sides. 
then we'll just see what we can force them into. Although it may be better off to kind of arrange ourselves like so. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. Let's just hang out and see what they do. We get willpower plus one to all of our individuals because our morale is high. And I think, yeah, we're just going to chill right here. Let's just kind of wait and have a look and see. Okay, so it looks like their range isn't quite so wide as what I thought it was. Got a big guy over here who looks like he's pretty much strapped for combat. He's got 18 strength. So these two fighters right here, it's going to come down to who hits each other first. I'm going to try and make sure that it's hack on. Where is this guy at? So yeah, hopefully he'll move his full distance. There's no telling if he's going to or not, but if he does, hopefully we can get hack on down on him before anything else terrible happens. That guy right there should be using the same knockback ability that Gris has. continue resting till dust settles here we figure out where our adversaries are going to be at and he hasn't tapped himself in I'm going to collapse these two slightly since it looks like the majority of the battle is going to be taking place over here so in the next little bit I may collapse these four back this way and have these two deal there maybe or like have these three go that way and these three go that way. Doesn't seem like a terrible idea. I'm trying to keep myself out of AoEs right now too. Let's do a little bit of advancement. Okay, so the first shots are off. Because his strength is low, he can't really accomplish what I want him to. But he can deal some damage. Now that guy's going to have to run away after we hit him. But that's fine. At 6 strength, he's not going to be able to really hurt anybody anyways. We've created a little bit of a pocket of resistance over here that I'm a little terrified about engaging. How close can he get? He can get to right there. So let's move him on up to like here. This guy I am concerned about. He seems like he could cause us a little bit of pain. And so now has he booby-trapped the ground right there? Let me look at the specifics. They deal... Okay, so on his next turn, those are going to detonate. So he's made a little bit of a line in the sand right there that we're not going to be able to cross. Either that or we have to dodge across it before it's too late. And does it do 2x2 two two tiles or what does it do? Alright, so pretty much we want to get our tank out of there in the next turn. It doesn't appear as though those are AoEs. So let's see if we can step back... If these turn out to be AoEs, I'm going to be a little sad because it only says that they affect, like, the space that they're on, maybe? Or it isn't very... There's not a whole lot of specificity in the description, to be honest, so I'm not really sure how that's going to turn out. In any case, I should be able to get my tank up and in here before anything else terrible happens. Now then. When is his next turn? His next turn's right there. And Hakon acts before he does. So what I'm going to do is we're going to prime him for an ass-whooping. Oop, nope, we're not going to rally. No, 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 no. We're going to go for an armor hit of six right there. There we go. Little more armor damage done. I'm going to step him up to here in case this guy decides to show up and cause problems. In the interest of getting the hell out of the way of those explosives, I'm going to step him over to here. And we're going to continue wailing on this guy. Which there's a nautical... Oh, it does affect everything in the area. Okay, so now I know. It's an AoE damage ability. So what did we learn? It doesn't specify that in the description. If we read it, it says 2N area on the next turn. It doesn't say like a 2x2 two two area, which is what it should say in order to allow you to adapt to that situation more appropriately. A little bit of a letdown right there with regards to the feedback that I've been given in order to adapt to the situation. I wouldn't have made that move right there had I known... But, no use crying over spilled milk. It's a learning experience, so at least we got something out of it. He's now going to fall back. 
and summon an ally, but I'm gonna kill him before he gets that done. For sure he's gonna die before he finishes that off. Now, I feel like they want me to back, be back up in here because he can now lay down AoEs all over the place. I think I'm gonna start falling back this way to force them out of this little alcove. I don't like it. I feel like I'm playing to their strength right now. Although I may send Luden in as just kind of a distracting force. Okay, so he's ready to go. Where can he move to? That means I'm going to move low here. He's out of willpower, obviously, so maybe I won't do that. Big Bomber up here has opted to throw down on us. We're going to start working his armor a little bit. And I think it's actually going to be more efficient for us to go through with Bring the Pain. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue pulling on back. Luden should get another turn. Oh, he got the ability done before I could take him out. Weak. Super, super a weak. He can only do two damage to him, so let's kill this guy off. Actually, no. We're going to leave him. He's just a giant roadblock as it stands right now for this little guy. So let's leave him where he's at and we'll deal with him in the next turn. Yep, that's what I was hoping would happen right there. That's absolutely 100% what I was really, really hoping would occur. Oh, they got him. Okay then, so with these chappies... Does he run away when he gets hit? Good. Fantastic. I hope you heard the devious nature and hatred in my voice when I said that. Let's go ahead and stick him. And now that he's been stuck, that is going to render him completely and totally out of the battle. With this guy over here, a couple of options, but he's not going to be up for a while. And we are going to get a few more turns before that, so what I'll do here is we'll go ahead and finish him off with Eric. He let loose one of his nasty knockbacks right there, unfortunately. But we're going to close the gap one more time, and we're going to go bring the pain for another round. Two more armor gone. The explosives didn't hit anybody. And my plan over here is just to get Luden into the middle of them and just have him basically impale everybody just so they all bleed out very, very rapidly. On this side, we can do nine damage to that little guy right there and can take him completely and totally out of the battle, which is what I'm gonna do. Down he goes. Luden is taking damage right now, so we're gonna have to get him into the battle quickly. This guy over here has a lot of armor, but I think I'm just gonna go for a straight on attack because really his strength is nothing to write home about. So who's left at full health here? We have a full health individual. Ramya. So another impalement away. And there we are. All these guys are pretty much absolutely 100%. Oh, I didn't notice he had like a little beaky mask on. That's pretty sweet. Kind of a badass looking piece of equipment. I'm going to have Eric move on in since he's got a lot of health left. We'll attack him on his armor for the one. And that should line him up in the next turn to be taken out by just about anybody. He's ambidextrous. He can throw with both hands. That's an impressive feat. I can't throw. Well, I guess he's got impressive hands, not impressive feet. But anyways, I can't throw with both hands. I throw with my left hand, and I just look silly. Downright ridiculous. Let's start dealing damage. Down he goes. Hakon is already leveled up, but I think, yeah, let's continue working Hakon a little bit, making him better. Ooh, how did those go off so early? Did I miscalculate the turns? I think I miscalculated the turns. My badsies. Nothing to be concerned about, though because he's about to die.
And Luton's gonna attempt to be the hero here for the last time. And there it is, bleed him out. He's got another promotion, so he's now a level four Spearman. I really like the Spearman's ability versus ranged people. I was wondering how that would be useful in a lot of cases, but it's, it's done pretty well. He's ready to go. How much renown are we getting out of this? Eight, so not a whole lot, but it's something. You lean on a crumpled wall, watching endless waves of dredge marching below. Satisfied hack on, Mogir asks. The vast number of dredge remind you of the Great Wars. I've seen enough, you reply. Let's get out of here. Mogir stands over the bodies of the man of the man and woman, of a man and woman. Think the slag came up here for these two? Asks Mogir, waving his bloodied weapon their direction. Any idea who they are? The man is dressed in light clothes unfit for travel in the north. The woman wears an ornate but simple robe and shawl. No, but something wrong about this, says Mogir. He pauses, then puts his ear to the man's chest. This one's still alive. The girl's not. The clang of metal reaches you from the courtyard below, muffled by the thick snow. You curse. Quick, back down. Bring the live one. You skip stairs as you, as you descend, shouting orders to the Varl below. God, there's another battle. The save system in this game leaves a lot to be desired. I really wish that I could kind of back out of this right now. But anyways, I'm going to end the episode here, and I guess I'm going to have to record another. <laughs> it's the end of my day, unfortunately. It's definitely after 5 for me. I'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs> Take care out there, everybody, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. Bye.